Good afternoon, Evan. How are you today, Ken? Stupendous, pal. Stupendous. Yeah, I don't blame you. Well, we're both doing good. The Knicks, of course, blowout dub. Well, I felt bad for you because why'd you, you feel bad for me. You hate blowouts. You want games to be close. Yeah, I turned the game off. Ugh. That's right. I didn't Ugh. watch. The, I didn't watch the last few you minutes didn't of it. Enjoy every second no. of that blowout over I, the yes, Washington Wizards. I enjoyed Wizards. the win. I enjoyed how Randall played. Played till the very end, by uh, the way, which made no sense to me. <laughs> uh, but I, I was not like locked into the entire second half. Why not? It was on. But I didn't sit there and watch oh, every dude. possession the way I normally do because, you know, a lot of the games are close. But, look, I'm happy. We won. And you're happy. You won. Damn right. And as I said to you, and we'll get into this later if it's okay with you, I do believe that James Harden is the MVP of the league. And I said that to you a couple weeks ago. And a game like last night, again, just, you know, I think gives me a little bit more ammunition. Every game he oh, plays, he plays well. I think he is the MVP of the league now. Is he going to play tonight against the Utah Jazz? 50-50. 50-50. James but said. King I do, James uh, said. I do think he's the MVP of the league. King James Harden said, if I wake up and I'm able to play, I'll play. And yeah. I think he's proven that that's how the decision's going to be made yes. on his part. He is the anti-Kyrie now, and the anti-Durant. The now, guy just I, loves I, to play and wants to play. I'm going to tell you this that. right now, and you yeah. can hate me for saying this. I don't yeah. really care. Huh. I prefer James Harden doesn't play tonight. Excuse you? I prefer James Harden oh, takes an eye off. with that crap. Hey, we just started the show. God, I'm be, being honest with you. I'll you explain want it to, to you. No, you want him to play. I'll Let's explain go. it to Come you on. later, but I <laughs> would prefer that King James takes a break tonight. That's all. Well, listen, I think that's a joke. Why? I'm shocked that you are you are so desperate for this title. You are yes. waving everything yes. of course you believe I'm in desperate. for all these years Dude, of your life. Everybody <laughs> in this city listening, no matter what yes. team you root for, you are desperate for a title. C Mac is a Yankee fan, is desperate for a title. Twelve years is a long time. Yes. We are all desperate for a title, so don't act and say that as yes. if I'm nuts but for being desperate for a title. You're willing to forego, I I'm sure what has been a lifetime of beliefs because no. that desperation no. actually is closer now to being a reality I, than at any other point of your I life. I have always felt the ultimate goal is winning a championship. And sometimes things that go that way lead to uncomfortable decisions throughout a regular season. I love baseball. We're going to have a baseball season in a week. I understand that in this day and age, Francisco Lindor is not going to play 162 games. I understand Jacob DeGrom is not going to be pushed to throw 125 pitches and complete opening day. Ideally, I love to see pitchers pitch complete games. But I also get it, Craig. Yeah. I get Desperado. it. I understand Desperado. You're damn right. Why don't you come to your senses? Yeah. Listen, yeah. if I was that close to a title talent-wise, I can't say I, can. I would be any different. But since I'm not, yeah. I'm allowed to, of course, pretend like I would well, be you have and a, have fun with you. You have a fun <laughs> basketball team. You should be very proud of yourself. Because you know what I realized about the Knicks last night? Cause What's that? It's something that, coming out of the All-Star break, we both said, we don't know how good this team is. And being above 500 is going to be a necessity if you want to be a top six seed and not play in the play-in tournament. The Celtics continue to struggle, and the Toronto Raptors stink. And the reason I say that, yeah. those two things have made me really believe, boy, the Knicks have a legitimate shot at making yeah. the playoffs outright. Legitimately, without the playing, right. Meaning yeah. top six seeds. I agree with you. Yeah. And, you know, listen, last night was a good win. I know what my Knicks are. You know, my Knicks are about a 500 team. They uh, need more pieces, more shooters. But, you know, uh, they do fight every night. They do try their damnedest virtually every night. And... Well, that should no longer be something that you hope to have happen, that you celebrate happening. You also got to keep it real. And for a franchise that unfortunately has not been very competitive over a lot of the last 20 years, you got to take those small steps and enjoy and them when you can enjoy I want, them. I want, so I'm with you on that. I want C-Mac to do me a favor. I want you to save all the audio of what Craig has had to say about me selling my soul. Yeah. Because the Knicks are moving in a great direction, and there's a decent chance you're going to sell your soul before you know it. How's that? And you may be able to acquire a superstar. You may be able to have superstars that are required and need maintenance days. And I want you to remember the hypocrisy. The hypocrisy. The hypocrisy. Well, write it down, mark it down, write and it if down. I'm if I do become hypocritical, <laughs> feel free to call me on it. Now, something happened at the Nick game last night, which many of you have no idea about, but uh, we want to get into with you here today because I think you're going to be surprised at my take on it. Although Evan and I have not really discussed it at all, we are both aware of it. 
some jackass shows up at the garden last night, and there's only how many people in the garden? It's 1,300 about, or so? Yeah, 1,400, 1,500, yeah. Right, not a lot. So those tickets are hard to come by. And those tickets, obviously, you know, the people that are going to sit in those seats are either ridiculously diehard Nick fans or they have some connection to the visiting team, and it's their only shot to see blank play, right? Mm -hmm. I think we agree that's that's who's sitting at these uh, these games. And it's a privilege right now and a gift to be able to go see your favorite team play because of all the COVID nonsense. So dude shows up at Madison Square Garden last night, and he's rocking a T-shirt that says, Ban Dolan. Mm -hmm. Now... When there's 18,000 people in Madison Square Garden and you're sitting in a nondescript seat, there's a good chance no one's going to notice that. And the people around you may even get a laugh out of it and you'll take a couple pictures and you'll try to become an Instagram star and before you know it, you'll be massaging Deshaun Watson. <laughs> and who knows, where, who knows where it goes, right? Right. But when there's only 1,000 people in the building... It's kind of hard to hide a Ban Dolan shirt. Now, we all know the history of how James Dolan reacts to things like that. Usually not well. So Garden Security is dispatched to go talk to the guy. And the guy, of course, like everyone these days, immediately turns on the camera video recorder and records the entire interaction. Okay? Garden Security was beyond awesome. And professional and polite and gregarious. So they go up to the guy and they go, listen, sir, we have, an, we have a situation. Can't allow you to stay in the building and wear that shirt. Uh, the building views that shirt as being offensive. So here's what we'd like to do. We'd like to offer you a free New York Knicks shirt so that you can wear that instead of what we deem to be your offensive shirt. Now, is it is it that type of message that really is going to make you lose sleep at night? Probably not. But James Doan owns the building. James Doan owns the New York Knicks. It is legitimately his building. So would you let somebody walk into your house wearing a shirt that says, Evan sucks? Probably not, Right. So they offer this guy a shirt, and the guy, he's not, he doesn't act like a jackass, to be fair. Mm -hmm. He refuses the offer. And they said, well, listen, this is not a free speech matter. This is a private building. The owner of the building believes that that shirt is offensive. We are well within our rights to ask you to leave and not refund your ticket expense. And that's what happened. So they kicked the guy out of the building. So the guy then, of course, runs to social media. <laughs> James Dolan and the Knicks kicked me out of Madison Square Garden. Well, let me say something about that. I love it. Well, which part do you love? I love the <laughs> fact that he got kicked out of the building. Because too many times now, it's an anonymous attack and you hide behind Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or some other social media platform and you think you're a tough guy and there's no... There's no ability for the person you're taking a shot at to get you back and put you in your place. But when you walk into Madison Square Garden, the owner of the garden has the ability to give it back to you. So if you want to be a clown and if you want to be a jackass and go to Madison Square Garden and essentially make yourself a human billboard attacking the man that owns the building why would you expect him to not kick you out of the building? Yeah. I applaud it. Finally, we got one of the trollers back, <laughs> and he got a little taste of his own well, medicine. And now his butt hurts, and he doesn't like it. I love it. The only one in this whole party, because I watched the video and I read the tweets, the only person that deserves a round of applause, the only person that deserves a hug, virtually is garden security because they handled it with the utmost class. First of all, one thing you left out is the guy mentioned it was his birthday. And so garden <laughs> security wished him a very happy birthday. 
So in the midst of explaining the situation, and they did offer him a shirt saying, hey, look, you can stay. Here's a shirt. We're giving you a shirt. We're not even making you go to uh, buy a shirt for $55. They're offering him a free shirt? I thought it was By the handled. Way, and I'm sorry. Yes. That offer comes from James Dolan. Okay, fine. That's not security that, saying, uh, hey, listen, we want to offer you a shirt. James Dolan said, look, I get I it. I don't know if the we guy's know that. taking a we shot. Really know that? 100%. You know that for 100%. I know that's a fact. So Dolan has told security, so do- look, Dolan offer says, them a shirt. Yes. Okay. That's yes. Fine. I think that's great. So, but what would be greater yeah, go ahead. is not being so sensitive. Okay, now, let me say that. Would you agree that would be greater? I do believe that they are too sensitive. I want to be clear about that. So you agree that there shouldn't be this situation to begin with. Let the guy or gal or anyone wear a shirt like that. It ain't that big of a deal. I don't think it's that big a deal. I do think the sensitivity level is well beyond where it should be, considering the life that Mr. Dolan has led. Right. Right, and his success and wealth and all that stuff. Like, why let one shirt bother you? Right. But here's the part of it that I love. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that rather than just sit back and allow it to happen and let trollers get away with being trollers and make a name for themselves by walking into the building with the shirt on, that we have one owner in this town that's willing to fight back against that type of douche. So from that standpoint, I love it. Craig, I would agree with you. That looking at the tweets of this gentleman, I think he did this on purpose. I think he, he did knew. it to make himself okay. a star. I totally agree with you in this case. I think he did it on purpose. And I think you're right that when you walk into a building right now where there's only 1,400 people and you know how sensitive Dolan is, you knew this would happen. Like you walked into it knowing that. But I'll ask you a broader question. Go right ahead, sir. If the Wilpons still own the team, yeah, there are Met fans, myself was included, who were angry at ownership. Right. I think you were at times. Would it have been wrong to wear sell the team at City Field? And would you have applauded Met ownership for threatening someone and saying you can't wear that shirt? You know what? We it, have a right to express no, our you displeasure. Don't. Not in a, not in a building they own. You okay, don't. Here's your problem with that comparison. I mean, you don't. You you used my house or your house as yeah. an example. No one's coming to our house and spending two hundred dollars a ticket. No one's coming to our house Doesn't and rooting for a team to win. So, so it's a public trust. It's what Steve Cohen let me said. Ask you, a question. you buy the team as a public yes, trust. I agree with They're that. Not your plaything. I agree with that. It's not your gym. It's not Let, your toy. Does it still? He still owns the business. He owns it. I understand. I don't own it. I support it. Look, you support the teams you support. My only point is this. Is he too sensitive? Yes. Yes. I want to be clear. I believe that James Dolan in this regard is too sensitive. Mm-hmm. But I love the fact that he's willing to say to a jackass that comes into his building, why should I sit back and look up at a guy that's trolling me saying ban Dolan? Right? Why should I just sit back and take it? So, has he been a great owner? No. Do we win enough? No. There's a million things that you could be critical of, a lot of the owners in this town, Dolan included. Mm -hmm. But if a guy wants to walk into my building and say, ban me, is that right? Guess what? You want to play? You want to be a big boy? I can play the game too. And what I love about what security did because... Well, security was great. There have been times in the past, to be fair, where I thought security was a little Mm heavy-handed in kicking people out. I thought the security guards, and you don't see their faces or anything because the way the camera angle is, I thought, like, if I'm James Dolan today and I've seen that video, I want to applaud my security team for doing it in the most professional way possible. They were classy, they were professional, and it wasn't a confrontation. I mean, on both ends, like, it never got into a screaming match. It, it I love just, it. I love it. it. There, there's so, not, there, that's one for the good guys. So well, the all good you, guys, the all, billionaire owner right. who's ultra sensitive is the good guy. Because I get all you, you okay. jackasses out there that think I can say what I want to say with no repercussions, and I'm going to be a tough guy, and I'm going to troll this one and that one and the other one, every once in a while... You, the bully gets beaten up too. Really? And that's so all the billionaire that who kicks someone out of his that's building right. is not the bully? How about this? No, Don't answer that come, question. Is the billionaire not yeah, the bully who not, kicks someone out because he's got the power? Not in this regard. Really? Because he gave him a chance to no, stay no, in and, the and, building and Craig, with a free Craig, shirt. Craig, that aspect of it I like. I mean, yeah. if you look at the whole nature of this, 
First of all, if you're an owner of a team, I don't think you should be that sensitive where, oh, my God, he said he wants to ban me or sell the team. Yeah. But I do like the aspect. And if it was Dolan's decision, I gave him at least credit for this, to say, look, you don't just throw him out. Give him an option. And I'm even surprised they gave him a free shirt option. Yeah. I mean, the guy could have turned his little gimmick into a free garden T-shirt. That's right. What a victory. But But, but, Dolan has been... More so than I think at any other time in his career as the owner of the Knicks. Because he's done, he's one of the most charitable guys in America and gets very little credit for that. But in his capacity as garden owner, Nick owner, Ranger owner, all right, this year I think he has had a terrific year in how he has tried to make the fan experience, the limited fan experience, as uh, uh, palatable as possible, not jacking ticket prices. You know, you know, making sure that your know, fans can get back in there without paying triple the cost of a ticket, all that stuff. So I just think every once in a while, when you have these guys who are trying to become social media stars, because that's all this was about, the guy's trying to make a yeah, name but you for don't himself. Think there are other Sometimes Nick fans, you got to punch the guy back. But you don't think there are other Nick fans or other fans in this town that are mad at owners where they want to wear a shirt like that? I'm sure there are. Okay. Sure. So sure. why are you siding with a billionaire who says, I've got the power to do this? And I get he does. I'm not yeah. arguing that. Why would you side with that? Yeah, you You're think I would, right? with the billionaire over a guy. And look, in this case, I think he was trying, the, the guy who did this, I think it was about a bigger message he was trying to send. But you can't deny, Craig, that there are plenty of Nick fans. There were Met fans before Cohen bought the team. There are certainly Jet fans. Sure. Maybe even some Giant fans, not as much, who are mad at their owners. Sure. And they want to express that. Because let me ask you a question, and I know you could easily say it's not the same. But I'll throw it at you. Go ahead. If... Someone showed up at Madison Square Garden All right, go ahead, saying sir. fire Thibodeau right. or trade this guy. Yeah. Is Dolan as sensitive for the guys who no. works for him? Uh, probably or just not. Him? Just him. I mean, are you more sensitive about people that say things about you or about me? Right? For you're, you. I'm more sensitive about people who say <laughs> stuff about you. Listen, you're my partner I mean, and you're my friend. Human nature is, of course, you're going to be more sensitive when the arrow okay, is pointed at you. you. That's human Okay, nature. then here's my question. That's not a Dolan so issue. So you agree that wearing a Boyan Dolan shirt should cause you to either be thrown out or covering it up. You agree with that policy? Uh, I, let me, do I you agree like, with that policy? I don't like the way you asked the question. Why? Because I do believe there's an extra level of sensitivity that's, I think, somewhat ridiculous. Okay. Right, like, at the end of the day, so you say, like, why does that bother you? But I like the fact that we're now going to fight back a little okay, bit. Okay, do you I think, like that. Do you think he should fight for the guys that work for him, too? So of course so, he should. Okay, so if yeah. someone shows up yeah. at Madison Square Garden saying, yes. fire David Quinn. Yes. And I'm sure there are plenty of Ranger fans, especially with what's happened since Quinn's been out, who feel that way. Yes. Should James Dolan have that same sensitivity no. for David Quinn? He should not. Why? Why? He, he makes not. a hell of a lot less money. He's out there every single day trying to coach his hockey team, yes. good or not. Yes. So he's only sensitive about himself when no one can ban James Dolan. He owns the team. That's right. So that, yes, but everyone else, no. Uh, fire uh, Thibodeau, listen. fire Quinn, trade this guy, trade that guy. That's okay. I have not. Listen, is it okay? Yeah, it's okay. Look, all of it's okay. By the way, I think wearing the Ban Dolan shirt's okay. I agree. But it's going to be at your own risk. Because David Quinn doesn't own Madison Square Garden. James Dolan does. And if you don't like the rules, find a couple nickels in the street, put them together, and see if one day you can buy the garden from him. Oh, stop. What do you want me to tell oh, you? Oh, stop. That's how, that's how the, it is. The guy who recorded this fired yeah. off a bunch of tweets afterwards. Because yeah, the guy's the lines, trying to make himself a, what, a, a star. One of the lines he had I completely agree with what in was? relation to the teams we all root for. Rooting for a team and hating ownership are not mutually exclusive. Say that again. I apologize. Rooting for a team yep. and hating ownership are not mutually exclusive. Yeah, it's fine. You can Met fans know full well. We you know can it. despise your owner and love your team. I agree. Listen, I think every fan at some point, other than maybe the New York Giant fan ha- uh, or the Yankee. Well, no, Yankee, no, no. Listen, Yankees had their Yankees issues. Yankees had that too. Long runner. time ago, but yeah, yes, I think the Giants might be the only fan base in New York. That that would not apply to. I think in the late 70s it applied to them. I think the last few years before the judge hire, there were some Giant fans turning. Look, like with all teams, there's good times and there's bad times with the teams that, or with the owners of the teams you root for, you know? 